Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts, Robert O'Haver and Matt Weber, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. All right. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Search Talk Live. I'm your host, Robert O'Haver, along with Mr. Matt Weber of Roar Internet Marketing. Matt, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, Robert, and really looking forward to today's show. Yeah, before we get into it, I wanted to apologize to you guys. We've been off a couple of weeks, and to be honest with you, it's been, I started a new job, awesome job. Um, I don't want to go into that, but uh, so I, I've got to, I had to get acclimated. So, you know, I couldn't do the show at the same times every week anymore, so I had to move the date. So now it's going to be Friday, uh, probably about 4.30 every friday uh from four yeah four thirty to five thirty, and uh yeah so i just wanted to let you guys know the show is going to continue uh we're going to continue to bring you great information and content um and those of you that are tuning in for the first time the show we, we talk about everything to do with content marketing social media s- search engine optimization um uh, uh really you name it we have a little bit of something for everybody um, this week we're doing something on con- a little bit of SEO and some content marketing as well. Uh, yeah, you know, Robert, I don't think people know how much time you invested into moving the Search Talk Live studios. That in and of itself was a big deal. The rock wall, the espresso <laughs> machine. Uh, that that's a lot of effort to do, and I want to thank you for taking the time to set up the new Search Talk Live studios. They look great. Yeah, the baristas weren't happy though. I know, I know. And (laughs) and when do we need them more? It's a Friday afternoon. We need them more than anything. And also, Robert, too, I want to say hi, if I may, to the folks who I just spoke with this week at the Nationwide Marketing Group Primetime Conference in Orlando, Florida. Spoke to hundreds of independent furniture and appliance retailers. And, of course, I told them about the show, told them about the podcast. And a lot of them said, oh, man, I got to check that out. So we've got a couple new folks listening from that group. But I just wanted to say hello. Yeah. And if you have questions, now you can get those in going to Twitter and typing in hashtag Search Talk Live. We'll get, get your questions answered live on the show. Uh, let's don't waste any more time. Our guests today uh, are the co-founders, both of them. We have a two for here. Um, co-founders of Pitchbox. We have Alex Gobstein. I probably messed that up. And Michael Janellis. How's it going, guys? We're great. Thanks so much. You did not mess it up. You messed awesome. mine a little bit up, but uh, Michael's you got correctly. Right. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to have you guys on. I, I I was just telling Matt I met you guys at the uh, PubCon convention in Las Vegas, a uh, place that's always fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was uh, back in November, and uh, yeah, it was the first time we met. Yeah, yeah. It was so, a good show. Yeah. Uh, I want you guys to tell us your story, how you got started, and all about your company. Okay, Alex, want to take it? Um, yeah, I, I just broke up a little bit. I apologize. Can you repeat the question? Oh, I'm sorry. I, said, I want to hear how you guys got started and tell us about your platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, Michael and I, we've been in the SEO industry uh probably 15 years at this point. Um, we ran our own digital marketing agencies, and uh, obviously link building was always a big thing. Uh, and and uh, link building, as we're going to discuss link building and content marketing, it's a very time-consuming process. It, there's a lot goes into it. A lot of times you, know, you, you end up with a lot of different spreadsheets, a lot of different software, uh, tools to help you try to scale um, or try to stay organized. And um, Michael and I got together uh, about eight, six, eight years ago um, and decided that let's, let's build something uh, that's going to help our teams be more productive. And coming actually, uh, both him and I uh, started our careers as software engineers, and we love hacking things, and we like optimizing processes. So it just, it was a it was a good match. So we decided to build something, a tool that our teams are going to run in-house to make our our team more productive, more organized, um, and and really be able to do more with less. And uh, it took us about six months to have a, an initial version that, 
that was that kind of had a, a lot of interesting components to it. It had a discovery component. It had an outreach component. Um, it was kind of the early stages uh, of building our own CRM system. Um, and it started to work. It was really, really exciting. But being in a business for so many years, we kind of we were pretty proud of it. So we shared it with some folks uh, in the industry as we build a lot of relationships over time. And they loved it. And they said, look, we, we, we'd like to get access to this thing. Um, and that type of feedback was like, Michael, I think we have a product on our hands. I think we have something that people actually want to use. That's, uh, we, that's, that's we really made, awesome. So you built it out yeah. of a need, an, an internal need, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, Michael is awesome with uh, design. He made it pretty. Well, he's awesome with a lot of things. Uh, but one of them is design. He made it, he made it look really good. He's, he's in charge of our UI. Uh, and uh, we gave it a name. That's how Pitchbox was born, and, and we launched. And we actually launched at TechCrunch in New York. Um, oh, wow. That was, that was a pretty cool experience as well. And, and it was kind of like you know, it was us entering into this uh, world of SaaS. Like I said, it wasn't never meant to be a, a product or a tool, but it, it turned out to be, uh, to be that. Wow. Give us some sense of what, for the audience, blogger outreach is and how it's changed since you launched your product. So, uh, what is blogger outreach? Uh, it's you know it's identifying the bloggers that essentially publishers who um, who publish articles or write blog posts, obviously on a topic that you as a company or a, your client um, are in in the same industry. It, reaching out to them, and uh, from a blogger outreach, there's obviously a, many different. Uh, strategies that can implement, and one of the obviously more popular ones is guest posting, uh, con- con- guest contribution or content contribution, um, and, and essentially you get you get placed or you get mentioned on their blog. You'll get some traffic coming through it. Um, the blogger is uh, interested in getting that content because everybody wants to publish great content on their site. Uh, since it's on their website, they're going to be. Uh, interested in, in promoting it, so they'll probably go to social, uh, Twitter, uh, other channels that they they, they uh, are participating in, and and try to promote your article. And obviously, you do the same, and you get a link. So that kind of takes us into link building. But it was a it was a two two type of question uh, from you. It was what is, and obviously, how has it changed? Um, I mean, back in the day, again, we've been in in, in the space for many many years. Uh, it links. A link was a, a link. A link is a link. Was always it didn't really matter back in the day, long time ago. You know whether the uh, the website is relevant to you or your client. That obviously has changed a lot. So now getting a link on irrelevant site that's not you know in any way, shape, or form talking about your industry or your type of services, it's not going to do you any good. So it obviously has to be topical. That's that's main the main mainly it. Um, another thing is obviously link building is very popular, and that's obviously still stands to be the most important variable in the algorithm. Uh, there's a lot of it happening, so a lot of popular bloggers get pitched all the time. So pitching. Um, whether again you're pitching a blogger for blogger outreach or really reaching out to anyone, um, you have to make sure that your message is personal. It, it's it's no longer the game of you know just throwing a lot against the wall and trying to see what sticks. Um, you can definitely do that, but you're just going to burn a lot of bridges and, and just burn through a lot of throwing against the wall. Some things uh, in today's day, it's important to be personal. Um, it's important to make that person feel like you really take take has taken the time to research them, uh, what they write about, what they care about, uh, what's going to get them to reply. And really, yes. that's that's another thing how it obviously has changed. Yeah, I'd have to say and what's my, really my, what what's really impressive about your platform. I see you have some of the biggest names in the industry, like Neil Patel and Brian Dean, uh, all use your platform, uh, which is. It's, you know, Russ Jones. Yes, we're, I want to say, lucky to have uh, a lot of um, big names in the industry use our platform. Um, mm-hmm. There are obviously some choices for them, that, but they do choose to use Pitchbox. Um, and, and I think that um, mainly um, we, we've created a process 
to allow folks who are trying to do link building, uh, we've created a process that allows them to be very, very organized and productive and not waste a lot of time on the grunt work. Again, link building, you know, there's a lot of different steps that you have to go through. Um, and being able to have that in one platform, I think that's what makes Bitchbox very special. Now, some people are doing blogger outreach for the purpose of product or service sampling, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, like product reviews. Yeah. So in that yeah. time, it's not necessarily about the link. It's really about the exposure, the impressions. Exactly. Yeah, it, it well, definitely. I think it should always be about um, exposure and impressions. Every link, yes, at the end of the day, you might want the link, but getting a link is, I have always looked at it as kind of a, you know, a, a great side effect in SEO. Oh, side absolutely. Effect. If you can get a placement where uh, on a relevant website and that mention or, or, or article, whatever it is, can actually drive uh, referral traffic to your e-commerce site or to your client site, it's a fantastic way to get more eyeballs to your product or your service or you know your content. So at the end of the day, I think looking at each and every opportunity with, through that lens is, is key. Uh, just building links to raise a number of inbound links, I think, is, is, is a, just an old school tactic right. that is, is not is no longer valuable I think relevancy and thinking about the quality of every of every link uh, so you know when people say well you know it could be uh, I don't want to get links from websites that do no follow I, I say that's also the wrong approach if you yeah. can get good referral traffic from that site what does it matter if you if you're gonna get some link equity or not, so uh, if you can actually get value from that placement, get it. Yeah, I mean, I pre- and, yeah. And to to piggyback on the on the product uh, that a lot of people send products for sampling, um, that's a great approach as well for e-commerce or um, more so for brands actually that are trying to get more exposure for their product um, because essentially it is a. It's a review, right? It's an extensive review, and we all shop at Amazon or some other stores that have a some type of a review system. And you know, me personally, if I'll go on Amazon and there's a product I'm looking to buy, and there's uh, you know, 20, 30 reviews on there, um, and those are positive reviews, I'll read a couple of reviews. This person is—I don't know who they are. That review, those stars that they give them, it's so authentic um, that they. They win me over, by, and I, that's going to drive my decision whether I'm going to purchase this product or look at an or, or a competing product. Same thing goes with product reviews. You know, if these people have, like Michael said, they have eyeballs coming to their website, um, and when they write a review, a lot of times they'll take some pictures and and, and they'll uh, they'll test out the product themselves um, and then write a review, and hopefully it's a positive review. That's a very um, effective way. To, um, to 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 really get people to buy in, in into that idea into that product, so it's it has been very very effective, and to yeah. increase conversion rates as well for e-commerce. Yeah, it's almost like a testimonial. But when you get a review right. from a true influencer, from a subject matter expert, or someone you know, let's say your client sells whatever protein powder and 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 some famous fitness uh, instructor or model. Uh, features your product on their blog, whether you get a link or not, um, if that that influencer has a huge following um, of, I don't know, quarter million people. Uh, You're going to sell a lot of powder. <laughs> You'll sell a lot of protein powder regardless whether you get that link. And, it, it, and if you can get a link out of it, fantastic. You know, that's, like I said, a, a beautiful side effect of getting that, that placement in the first place. So, and it, I mean, it's um, also a great way to, to build, you know, your email list. I mean, you're, you're using these influencers to bring in readers. You know, you get them on your mailing list. That's golden. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. and email still, I think, stands to be the highest conversion <laughs> conversion rate uh, marketing uh, <clears throat> how does a company who's thinking about starting a blogger outreach program for the benefits that we've discussed how do they begin to calculate the ROI because they're going to have to take resources from current effort A and put them over here as a test 
Can you walk them through how to, how to project what the return might be on this effort? Um, so measuring the ROI, um, this I think it basically also comes down to two, two major uh, factors. It's, you know, the, the reason you would do blogger outreach is obviously you're trying to grow your brand and get more traffic to the site. So if, you know, if, if blogger outreach or yeah, outreach is really the only thing you do, it's going to be pretty easy for you to measure the results looking at Google Analytics, uh, identifying all of the uh, placements that you've got and looking at that as a referral traffic. Um, a lot of that referral traffic um, is going to also, I mean, the social is going to come in effect too. As I mentioned, you know, somebody yeah. posts uh, your article, your, your piece of content on, on their blog, they're going to promote it. And you will promote it too you will, because it's obviously it's in your best interest. So that social, social media traffic that's coming through also could be measured. Um, and then lastly, it is still, you know, the side effect of it being a link, the more links you have, the better, hopefully the better rankings you'll get. So looking at the organic traffic as well. And then again, you know, if we look at the ROI, how can the business uh, translate traffic into sales? If it's a lead gen type site, obviously we can put a value on to every lead. What What is the lead worth for a company? And then we can calculate how many leads we, we've received through those three channels. Um, and uh, if it's an e-commerce, it's actually easier. You can put direct revenue numbers to it. Yeah. Now, Michael, you you had mentioned earlier about you know not worrying about the no follow links and I wor- and stuff like that. If you didn't have any no follow links, it wouldn't look natural. <laughs> you know, sure. And, which is exactly. so important. Well, so speaking of making it look natural in the whole concept, you know, you just asked about measuring the ROI of blogger outreach, but I think there's a broader question of measuring ROI on SEO in general. So depending on your industry, I don't know, let's say you have a, a client in gaming or uh, some of the more competitive spaces like gaming or uh, you know the adult space, etc., uh, mm-hmm. financial services. It's you know almost impossible to do blogger outreach in a space like that. Um, so other link building tactics will come in, into play. So I think the first step for any campaign, any link building campaign, is to look at your competitive landscape and really identify what type of links um, are driving rankings for top 20 companies in the space um, and and identify the balance of uh, strategies and tactics that everyone's using and I think if you stay within you know those bounds uh, it will look natural so uh, if you were comparing basic e-commerce retailer versus uh, a gaming website you would see <laughs> a different picture completely in oh, their, yeah, of course uh, in the tactics they use and, and type of links they get it's probably a lot less blogger outreach and something like gaming and a lot more resource page links or uh, paid placements etc so first step understand your landscape and and kind of go from there Let's give the listeners a, a first three steps. So step one, look at the links that your competitors are acquiring and see if those links are achievable through blogger outreach. What's step two and step three for the listeners who's going to start this blogger outreach program next week? Well, step two, I think, is coming up with a proper content strategy. So uh, analyzing content and figuring out uh, Make it at least a list of topics that you could write about and coming up with shareable assets that uh, you could push out to a number of bloggers. And uh, we see a lot of um, a lot of agencies actually just go through and brainstorm a ton of ideas and and pitch them out before they ever create content. So, it, you know, you shop these ideas with uh a number of bloggers, and if you get if it, if you get more engagement or interest uh, for a particular subject or topic, 
then you can go and write that content and uh, uh, strengthen those relationships. Um, step three is just, I think, <laughs> you know, rolling up your sleeves and doing the work. Um, it, it, like Alex said, it's a time-consuming process. It, 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 it takes a lot of work, even with a, a, a platform like ours. Um, so it's, you know, you have to roll up your sleeves and do the work. Yeah, definitely. So let's let's dive into it. How can your how does your platform help? You know, a content writer that's looking to get eyes on their on their articles. So Pitchbox is designed um, uh, again in as I mentioned in sort of in the process. It's a we've defined the process or a workflow system um, that allows our customers stay organized. So if somebody is looking to begin their blogger outreach campaign, um, and let's say it is a blogger who has an existing, uh, already built a good amount of content, uh, linkable content, their step one is going to be research, identifying um, opportunities and discovering who they are. So that would be step one. And Fitchbox, if we talk about the process in Fitchbox, we have a component in there. It's a discovery component where using kind of like a search engine, we're using keywords, you try to find um, influencers and other bloggers and publishers that um, it's going to make sense for you to connect with. Um, step two is the outreach. This is where you're going to be building out your pitch, essentially your you know, your templates, your email templates um, to begin that process. We, we put a lot of emphasis on, on personalization and, um, and customization of, of all of your outreach. So we want to make sure that when you're reaching out to, uh, let's say you are, you know, piggybacking on, on Michael's idea of, you know, powder, uh, somebody who is selling, you know, uh, weightlifting supplements and things like that, you're going to find maybe targeting weightlifting trainers, those that talk about those, those maybe that have created their own weightlifting programs or fitness programs. And so what type of things can we say to them that's going to drive their, you know, their, their attention? What's going to, what's going to get them to open my email? So it's not, not, not much different than email marketing, right? Mm-hmm. We want to make sure to get that message correctly. And also segmenting those lists is going to be extremely important as well. So, for example, there's going to be uh, some uh, fitness program that's focusing on weight loss, right? So that could be one segment. Um, and we could strictly you know, focus our campaigns or run our campaigns and focusing strictly on the weight loss type program. So when we're generating our message, we can talk about weight loss. We could talk about how we care about it. And then we could segment into another campaign, and that's going to be cardio exercises for middle-aged man, right? What kind of things do we need to say in our message, in our email, that's going to get them to open that email and get them to read it? And, um, and that's basically really setting... You, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just saying, that's really something that can't be templated, right? You know, you really have to write that unique for each person exactly well yes and no so it can be templated because the person the 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 bloggers or the 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 trainers that are talking about weight loss yeah i it can be a template because you know the 70 percent of that is going to be me talking because i'm able to segment that list i'm not just basically creating a campaign and sending the same message to every fitness trainer Right. There's going to be some fitness trainers that care about weight loss, another one straight strength training, another one you know dieting. Um, I'm able to generate those sub templates, so they're really no longer viewed as email marketing templates or just old school templates. They're very targeted, right? And I on top you. of that, we also give you some additional personalization um, data that you can include in in your email template. So it's not you know your true sending out just a blessing out a bunch of emails that we all get every day and we simply just ignore them. It's really the opposite. Yes, we're trying to give you the ability to not waste a lot of time or spend a lot of time on outreach, but at the same time, we 
um, strongly recommend spending the time on building out customized templates and segmenting and targeting each individual sort of uh, vertical or sub-vertical of people. Got you. That's your step two. Yeah, and and then step three, once you start the outreach, you're going to obviously start getting replies. Um, So that's your phase three, which is the relationship building. So this is where you're, there's no automation there, right? This is you're getting a reply from somebody getting more information. As Michael said, I could prepare a bunch of ideas, a bunch of topics, and I'm pitching them a particular topic. Um, and once they get back to me, I can, they're interested, they may want to tweak that a little bit. And then at this point, your, uh, your content team, or if you're the blogger uh, yourself, then you can start writing that content and then building those relationships. Okay. So where does this go wrong for most people? Where do they mess up? Well, <laughs> I think in many places. Number one, most people mess up in their pitch. Um, <laughs> they, you know, they 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 feel like, hey, you know, it's it's tough to write an email. And there's so much content now. They're writing personalized emails. Um, so many people talk about it, and so many people get it right. But unfortunately, majority of people get it so wrong. Um, and then they say, well, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work the way you do it. You can't just send one email uh, to different type of to different type of audiences. You have to be relevant. Uh, it, the email, the pitch has to feel organic. It has to feel original. It has to feel like you've actually spent the time to research them. Um, and yeah. if you do that, you're going to get the highest responses ever. Um, that's number one where they go wrong. Number two... A lot of people just send their initial pitch, initial email, and they forget about it. Basically say, well, no, I didn't get any responses. Well, of course you didn't get any responses you, because you didn't follow up. And I don't care whether it's this link building, blogger outreach, um, or sales. If you don't follow up, you're not going to get the results. We're actually working on a, on a study, and, um, on, a, on a, a white paper that actually is going to – Reveal some of the numbers. Um, what type of boost and response age you get with a second attempt, and what kind of boost with response age you get on the third attempt. And I've not too long ago I've listened to a podcast. Um, I think it was on Tim Ferriss's podcast. Uh, they were talking about in sales doing six touches, six mm-hmm. attempts, um, and it, it, you just stop at the point where they say stop. <laughs> and until they don't don't stop, you know. I mean, if you feel if you get upset if somebody says no, then that might not be link building or outreach might not be your your thing. So yeah, that's I think that's the number two most important part is following up, making sure to keep you know keeping at it. Yeah, and you you know when we were talking about templating, I have to say I get, and this is no exaggeration, probably about a hundred emails a day. Sure. People offering me SEO services, which is funny. Um, <laughs> yep. Content writing services, and probably ten out of those hundred have the exact same template. They just, you know, fill in the blanks, and it's like, come on. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's a blog post that Google put out that Google gets these solicitations. So take that template that you're familiar with where it says, you have a very attractive website. It's of attractive design, but I noticed you're not ranking well on Google. <laughs> and they, they send it to Google. Right. Oh, yeah. I think for me it's a test is like this. You know, If I can just replace um, – if I can picture myself being in uh, – you know, in a certain industry and reading this template, reading this email, does it apply to me? Yes. And then I'll say, okay, now I'm in, uh, I don't know, logistics business. Let me read this email again. Does it apply to me? Yes. Well, then there's no personalization there. I think that's just an easy test. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how would you contrast this effort with platforms that exist that enable you to connect up with bloggers who are specifically seeking compensation for their content? So well, you're talking about like influencer outreach networks, I'm assuming. Yeah, or pay per post. Pay per post. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, you know Google uh, yeah. loves blog directories and networks like that. And obviously, I'm being sarcastic here. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I would probably um, again. It's my personal opinion, but. And, so we have a huge index of the web. You know, we call the web uh, much like uh, many of the other SEO platforms out there: uh, mm-hmm. Majestic, Ahrefs, Moz, 
you know, we all crawl the web in our own way. We look for different data. Obviously, the data we look for is different than what they look for. So we look for authorship data. We look for contact information. We look for um, for publishers, for bloggers, for webmasters. And we could easily publish that that index if we wanted to, but uh, we we will at this point. Uh, I want to say we will not do that uh, <laughs> for the very reason that we we're not going to expose you know the index uh, of uh, of bloggers who are, who are willing to take paid placements or uh, you know work with uh, with SEO agencies. So, um, in in my opinion, and there is still a ton of opportunity in, in finding finding bloggers who don't look for compensation. Um, yes, SEO is, is obviously a lot more popular and, and it's it's harder to find uh, bloggers who won't ask for something in return than it was, let's say, five years ago, 10 years ago, of course. Yeah. But there are different um, methods uh, or approaches to value exchange. You know, if you're reaching out to a popular blogger and you know they have a bunch of ads on their website, um, your pitch could be a lot different. So you can try and preempt them asking for compensation um, by pr- promising to promote uh, your article. Uh, you know, you can promise to buy uh, run Facebook ads and drive traffic to. Um, that new article in their blog, right? So all bloggers want more traffic, obviously, especially if they monetize their websites with display ads, etc. So as long as you can deliver value um, and drive traffic, you can certainly work with uh, even really popular bloggers and you don't have to necessarily pay them for every placement you get. Interesting. Yeah. And I'd like to add to that too. I mean, like it also depends on how good you write the story. Because <laughs> if you ain't got a good story, you're, you know, pre- preaching to the choir, so to speak. Uh, but right now, guys, we have to take a break, but we'll be right back. Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Check out robertpalmercompanies.com for more information. Find the true value of your home when you log on. HomeValue.com Get your questions in on Twitter. Type hashtag SearchTalkLive and your question. Now back to the show. All right, we're back. Um, now, you know, you know, I'd also recommend doing your research before you write the article. So, like, you know, using a service like uh, BuzzSumo to find out... Y- does your platform do stuff like that or no? Like Buzz Sumo? Um, no, Buzz, Buzz Sumo is a, it's a great platform to identifying content that right. works, that, that does really well, popular content. Um, we, you know, one of the, uh, one of the strategies that uh, Brian Dean from Backlinko talks about, or he coined uh, the, the term um, a skyscrape. Um, that's what we see a lot of our customers uh, do as well. They'll uh, use a platform like BuzzSumo, um, find the content that did really well, got a lot of uh, social shares, got a lot of love, got, got a lot of links to it. Um, they'll produce a, a skyscraping content, basically content that's on the same topic but better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they'll use Pitchbox to promote it. So they'll identify backlinks to those articles, uh, to those uh, articles that they've uh, used for skyscraping technique, yeah. and then reach out to those folks and say, "Hey, I know you've you know I've noticed you're linking to this article. Would love for you, to, you know, would love for you to uh, review the article that we just recently published and get your get your take on it. And obviously, as a side effect, hopefully they'll link to it and promote it in social. So that's kind of how." Sumo works with Pitchbox. We've talked about some industry examples in the show so far, and you've uh, cited some cases where it works really well in this industry, maybe not so much in this industry. Can you kind of highlight a little bit of that for us? What industries have you had experience in where it really, really works really well, and what industries might it be a little bit more of an uphill battle in? Michael, you want to take that one? 
Sure. So specifically blogger outreach? Um, yes. I think you can make it work for <laughs> almost almost everything um, with maybe the exception of uh, uh, gaming and an adult <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've seen, we've seen everything from even um, heavy industrial equipment to, uh, of course, any, any tangible product or software, it, you know, it, it, it works incredibly well. Any plumbers? Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we always use yeah, these plumbers a lot. Yeah. Won't talk about local SEO. Um, I'm certainly not an expert in it. I've never done it. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, home improvement is, is a huge, uh, uh, hu- huge space, and 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 we have uh, large number of agencies that uh, specialize in in, in uh, local SEO and doing work like that specifically. Just. But you're saying the technique is effective for B2B and B2C. I think a lot of people look at this technique and think it's just for consumer goods, but it's it's more. Absolutely. But look, it's just one of the techniques. I don't want to get too hung up on blogger outreach necessarily because, you know, sure. again, if you look at your competitive landscape and you see that, uh, I don't let's say you have a, a recruiting software site or time management software site. So there are a lot of companies in that space. Um, and, and you see that, you know, you run some backlink analysis and, um, I don't know, using Ahrefs or Majestic or link resource tools. Um, you know, you look at the competitive landscape and you see that you can clearly see that, um, uh, your top five competitors have very high authority links, uh, from trusted sources like your government websites and EDU websites. You can do all the blogger outreach you want. You're not going to get your client ranked next to these stronger competitors uh, because they have amazing links from really trusted sources. So I think at that point, your focus should be figuring out how you can catch up to your competitors and get similar links Um that they have or even much better links that they have and, and create a stronger backlink profile um, based on what what's in your landscape. So it's not just, you know, let's do a ton of blogger outreach and we're going to start ranking, <laughs> uh, start ranking well next to a brand that's been around for 12 years and they have amazing links. But if you really, if, if you take a closer look at any brand's, Backlink profile. I think you'll identify some some patterns. Um, if you use use something like Link Research Tools, full disclosure, I'm friends with Christoph Kemper, um, so and it's mm-hmm. it, it's definitely my preferred uh, platform uh, when it comes to backlink analysis. But <clears throat> I would use Ahrefs or Majestic or Link Research Tools. Um, if you take a close look at any brand, you'll see some patterns some clear patterns and you will be able to identify uh, trusted links, uh, high authority links uh, th- that are really helping them rank well. So I think, as I said earlier, you need to start with that. That's the most important step if, uh, for any link building campaign is identifying what you need to go after. Um, for larger brands, it's a lot easier. So there's just a ton of low hanging fruit that you can do. Broken link building, which, which by the way, has a really high success rate because you are helping webmasters um, that have uh, outbound links that are no longer working. So when you, you know, if, if, if you run uh, reports in Ahrefs, um, uh, for example, to identify opportunities for broken backlink building, you can easily scale that process because, I mean, it, it just goes really fast. You don't need to create content. Uh, you're simply reaching out and saying, hey, you have a broken link here. Uh, here's a better resource you can link to because the one you're linking to now is no longer is no longer in place. It's it, it's right. simple. It's easy. And Or, again, if you're a larger brand and you get mentioned everywhere uh, all the time, but a lot of those mentions are just mentions, not links. So if, if you go and turn a lot of your mentions into... Just regular links uh, 
Brenda links to your homepage, um, and you're only targeting websites with uh, strong authority and trust. Uh, that that's going to have a, a positive impact on your your overall backlink profile. So, again, identifying what your competitors have and, and focusing on on high value opportunities is where you're going to find. Uh, Find some places that can really help you improve your backlink profile. And of gotcha. course, you're right. That, that's a result. Yeah. And then talking about some, you know, some, some folks that I talk to sometimes, they talk about, well, we're in a, not such a sexy space, you know. Um, you know, there, there aren't any opportunities for us to find links. There's not much content around it. So you have to get creative and try to find some uh, complementary industries or verticals so an example would be like let's say your your client is a uh, uh, cat you know have a uh, heavy machinery manufacturer well there's obviously not going to be a lot of content about about you know specifically heavy machinery um, you're you're going to probably run out of some opportunities to reach out to fairly quickly so what can we do you know what? What type of industry are there that are re- related to heavy machinery that we could reach out to and maybe become a thought leader in that space? Well, for example, one of them could be safety. All right, so we can talk about some of the safety in, in in heavy machinery. We could talk about logistics. You know, there's more content about logistics, or there's a lot more uh, bloggers and, and around that, that t- particular topic rather than heavy machinery. So it's you know once you identify your um, competitive landscape and again sometimes you just might come a little results might be dry try to venture off into some related topics um, and from a links perspective if we are talking about link building those are still going to be super valuable well, that's a really good tip so don't just focus down the middle of the road look a little bit left and I'll look a little bit right exactly. yeah who, who blogs about forklifts right <laughs> well <laughs> Probably thousands of, of people do at this point, uh, especially, but maybe half of them are in the SEO community and uh, just working, uh, writing content for their clients purely to you know, generate content and drive some links to it. But um, yeah, like Alex said, try and, and find related industries or related spaces where uh, you can find a lot more opportunities. Yeah, and the other thing too you should hit home about too is content is not always text on a page. It could be a video, it could be a podcast, it could be any of those things, you know? Absolutely. Yep. Talk, video, talk is, to us, video is huge. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about planning and, and resources. A company's going to get into this starting next week as a result of listening to the show. We talked about the kind of resources they need from a time perspective. Give us, give them some sense of what do they set aside to accomplish this? Yeah, so I talk to a lot of our customers a lot about that, about you know what type of skill sets are required to run um, to run a successful outreach campaign. So, and there's three. One, it's the SEO background, somebody who understands SEO, somebody who understands what a, a good opportunity is, somebody understands, can distinguish between a blogger uh, or a site that has recently launched and, and it's not, it's not going to provide a lot of value by, by connecting with them and building a relationship versus someone who's been around for a while and they are a great relationship for you, whether it's you know from potentially getting uh, referral traffic or from a link value perspective and this also this this skill requires you to um, understand SEO metrics right so whatever your platform of choice is whether it's going to be metrics from Majestic or Ahrefs or link research tools or Moz's domain authority for example this person needs to understand that so that's the skill that's somebody with SEO background then you need to have someone with a uh, attention to detail skill. So that's your that's we call them personalizers. So they will spend the time of researching researching each individual site, making sure that the they, they're a good fit. Um, at this point, it's more you know one by one. It's not a process where you scale. Um, it's looking at each individual website. What's so special about them? What are the contacts there? And again, this person just needs to be given direction in terms of what kind of contacts are we looking for, what type of sites are we looking for, what type of content should they be publishing, and 
you know, and would it make sense for us to actually build a relationship with them? Uh, this person doesn't necessarily need to have the SEO background. And a lot of our customers actually outsource this type of work. Either they'll outsource it to overseas or they'll hire uh, less expensive employees, interns, um, to handle this personalization step. And then the last skill that's required is... I kind of I don't want to refer to it as a salesperson, but it's the closer. It's someone who can communicate clearly and close deals. So once you start getting responses from these people, somebody needs to engage with them. Somebody needs to maintain that conversation, and somebody needs to finalize on it and actually close it. Right. So um, it's sometimes it is a sort of this person usually has that sales skill, right? Because there has to be a time when you have to go for it, right? As they say. But it has to be a, a, a person who communicates well. Um, they know how to build a relationship and they know how to close a deal. So those are the three skill sets. So if you're all by yourself and you know, you're know you going to be starting to run your outreach program, you have to make sure to divide these sort of steps in this process and put on your SEO hat and then kind of relax, get a cup of coffee, and go through the personalization step, review each opportunity, and then put your you know sales hat on and become that person that's going to communicate well and, and be very, very effective at that. But a lot of our customers will actually have different people responsible for these three different steps. Great summary. And would the, the same apply to, you know, if you're outreaching to influencers? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, like we said, link building is time consuming and therefore expensive. It doesn't necessarily make sense to have your SEO spend time on data research or data entry, right? Um, um, the time that SEO spent should be spent on identifying the right opportunities, running new campaigns, and communicating with these influencers. All the prep work that happens in between should be handled by, uh, I would say, more junior staff. So, again, a lot of agencies love to hire interns um, or uh, virtual assistants uh, to help them with curating lists and with data entry, etc. And, and then once your lists are ready, your link builders can pick up from there and uh, issue that final approval uh, for outreach and start communicating with all the people who are interested dealing with responses and closing deals like Alex said. Very cool. Well, Matt, I believe it's that time. All right. It is time for Believe It or Leave It, where we're going to ask you, uh, give you a statement that we found on the internet, and we're going to ask you to tell our audience whether they should believe it or leave it. Are you guys ready? Ready. Sure. Right, here comes, comes number one. By the end of 2018, the government will regulate how online content has to display if the content was sponsored or if the author was compensated in any way. By the end of 2018, the government will issue regulations concerning that. Believe it or leave it? I hope that's not true. <laughs> but I, I, think but it'd be I, more believe, good I don't know if it's going to be 2018, but I believe it's going to happen at some point. It'll probably be more Google than it would be the government. <laughs> well, the government has come down pretty hard on affiliates. Um, yeah. I think I think it, it eventually the same will happen with influencer marketers uh, because you know, all these people who are taking paid placements or, or featuring a product on their Instagram feed or whatever, YouTube, uh, will have to disclose that they're getting paid or getting the, the product for free. Um, and there'll probably be some legal ramifications if they don't. Yeah, I think so too, because if you think about how the regulations between traditional media and digital media are starting to close a little bit, if you buy a half-hour television show on a television station, the government requires you to run a 10-second billboard in the beginning telling you that it's paid content. Yeah. Right. Mm. Well, I think right, the issue... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, the issue is uh, a lot of that, a lot of these transactions... Um, uh, are not traceable, <laughs> and, <laughs> right? And the, and like I said, the exchange of value uh, value can be exchanged in many different ways. It doesn't have to be a, a you know a cash 
transaction or a credit card or PayPal transaction. So where do you stop? Where do you draw the line um, of what compensation means, right? right? If, you know, if, if I drive traffic to your site, are you being compensated? So it's, I, I think it's a, uh, there's a broader question here that uh, government will not be able to regulate or answer. Uh, right. I hope I hope they won't. <laughs> I don't see how they will be. It's not, it's not going to apply to blogger outreach because you're already listing your name on there. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. We got number two now. The most valuable bloggers are the ones who generate the highest volume of content. Leave it. The amount of content doesn't always mean that it's good content, and it doesn't mean that these sites have the most traffic. You could have uh, you, it's you could have a, a, a less content, but that content could be so good that it's going to drive all that traffic away from all these other sites that are just creating noise but not effective content. Nice. So I Alex, say leave it. Alex, what's your thought? That was Alex. I'm sorry, Michael. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's it's nonsense that um, less is more, uh, and equality is the number one thing that that's uh, it's going to drive value. So I think uh, uh, the amount of content is completely irrelevant. All right, number three, it is always more effective to solicit content producers via social media channels than email. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> the response rate is so much higher through email. Um, oh, yeah. I think that social content, whether it's you know if it's a tweet, so short lived, especially if they're influencers. Uh, there's so much going on on those feeds that uh, there's a super high chance of them not noticing it. At least with email, they'll see it; they might ignore it. But then there's follow up and follow up again and again and again until you get a response. Yeah, you want to get in the inbox. And, and it's still the most effective way. Email is king. Yeah. Most low, low costing too. So sure. I can't speak today. <laughs> um, all right. So let's, what about, let's see. Now, if people want to get a hold of you, are, are you guys in the social media, like Twitter or something like that? Facebook? Michael yeah. is much more social than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not. Uh, we don't. To be honest, we don't spend much time on Twitter. Uh, we're too busy uh, working on a product. But uh, LinkedIn is is probably the best place okay. to find me. So uh, LinkedIn dot com uh, slash Michael Janellis. Um, um, really easy to find. Um, it, yeah, it's the best way to get in touch with me. Our support at Pitchbox. No, <laughs> no don't do that. Okay. I, I think we have. I think we have just enough time, Robert, to squeeze in our Search Talk Live tattoo. Guys, we're going to ask you for your best, most succinct, most compelling piece of advice you can give our listeners based on today's content. Because you know Robert's going to get this as a tattoo, so it's got to be short and powerful. What is it? Uh, if uh, Drum roll. <laughs> right. Remember, wait, so, so whenever we go to a conference, we usually take a bunch of T-shirts with us. Teacher said, and I, I'm pretty sure Robert got one. Uh, yes. It says 99, 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. So, Robert, next time I see, you, I want that to be a tattoo in your arm. And that is great. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, right. That's music. Yes. <laughs> now, um, just for the listeners, what's your website, guys? Pitchbox.com. All right. <laughs> it's it's probably self-explanatory, but <laughs> oh, yeah. we have talked about yeah. it for the last hour. Yeah. And if you guys want to get in touch with us, you can just email us at uh, alex at pitchbox or michael at pitchbox.com. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah, if you if you are in, uh, a content writer, check out their program. Is uh, is it expensive to join up? Is there a, is there a uh, trial or anything like that? So we we don't we're a little bit different than a lot of the other SaaS uh, models out there. We don't really have a trial. Um, but we, we, we spend a lot of time with each individual um, customer that, that's in, or people that are interested in using uh, our platform. They go through a, uh, a demo process where they mm-hmm. you know, 
they get to see what pitch box does, how it works, um, and then we take them through the onboarding. In terms of expensive, um, it depends on your needs. Uh, our prices start at $195 a month, and they go up from there, um, depends on, depending on, on where you fall in. So we, we, try to, we try to place our customers into a, a, a plan or a hybrid where it truly makes sense for them. Sure. Um, if you know, we try to customize some things for them as much as we can. Very cool. And then, um, yeah. as far as the reporting side, is this? Uh, do you you have reporting? I'm I'm sure, right? For clients? yeah, we didn't talk about yeah we didn't talk about reporting, but reporting is huge. Um, you know, reporting and testing. So, uh, the testing what works and what doesn't is extremely extremely important. Oh. Um, and we have we have a lot of that in our platform, a lot of reports and analytics to help you make uh, data driven decisions and make adjustments and improve your overall uh, outreach program. So that whether it's going to be your response rate, your win rates, whatever it is that you know you're after, uh, whatever it is that you're testing, Pitchbox is going to allow you to do that and nice. ultimately again create a better program. The idea is really not to send more emails to get more responses. The idea is to send less, right? To, to send, to reach out to less people and get more, more, uh, more connections. So testing is going to be extremely important. Yeah. And I mean, also what is, I know you stress this, but it's super important is the fact that, you know, your customers, your clients, they don't see these links. They don't, they don't know what you're doing. So being able to give a report that says, Hey, this is what you got this month or, you know, is yeah, exactly. Important. Right. Yep. Yeah. We do have we do have a good amount of reports for agencies as well. They can yeah. they can um, uh, produce white label reports for their clients and kind of show them what type of things they've done for them over nice. a cor- course period of time. Yeah, that's huge. Well, Michael and Alex, I really want to thank you guys for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. It took me a while to get you on, but uh, it was a pleasure <laughs> meeting you in Vegas. Uh, it was a lot of a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. A lot of good information. Thank sure. you for having us. Really appreciate it. Great show, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks. Cheers. So, guys, I want to thank you all for listening. We have moved to a new time now. We'll probably be 4.30 uh, every Friday, Eastern Standard Time. You can hit us up on Twitter if you have questions you want to do uh, be asked on the show, or you can email Matt at Search Talk Live or Robert at Search Talk Live, and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys, and thanks for your support. Have a great weekend. Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. If you have questions for Search Talk Live, or you're interested in being a guest or a sponsor of the show, email Robert at searchtalklive.com. That's searchtalklive.com.